Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Sorry this isn't Ange doing the walk around. Uh, I feel like I could probably go over more of the technical jargon a little bit better uh, than she would and I'm a bit more interested in it to be honest. Now this has been a, a really requested video which is really cool. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing this rig walk around of our 2015 JKU Rubicon X that we have fitted out for full time overlanding around Australia. Who knows, you might even go to other countries we'll see how it goes. So as a bit of a background, Ange and I own this straight down the middle, half and half. I sold my 2008 JKU Sport called Chinook on my shirt here to pay for half of it and Ange paid for the other half. So I'm a very, very lucky man that I have found a partner who likes Jeeps just as much as I do and how capable they are. And without her putting her cash in, there's no way we could own this beast. So uh, as a background on the Rubicon spec, if you're unfamiliar with it, it just means that it has been set up from factory with more specs that make it more off-road worthy, if you will, and more of a weapon off-road. So it has front and rear Dana 44 differentials. And from inside the cab, I can lock both at the same time or individually via electronic lockers. It also has a motor which controls the uh, sway bar disconnects and that enables the wheels to articulate and flex more off-road. The Type X, as far as I'm aware, means that there were only a hundred of them bought into Australia and that's more of a trim spec that's slightly different than the other ones. This has got 110,000 kilometers on the clock and it is very heavy so it must be just shy of three ton but as you'll see later on in this video we've worked it to have larger brakes much more beefed up steering and suspension components so it's handling the weight incredibly well we've owned this for a while now but we've only recently been living in it full time so it's now been a one month on the road and there's almost nothing i would want to change with this rig so far we're really happy with that we're getting really good night's sleep every night uh, we're able to cook clean everything we need to do we're able to store all of our stuff everything we own now fits in this car and i'm really really happy with how it's turned out now the way i'll run this video is i'll first we'll go over the exterior and the motor then i'll go into delve a little bit deeper into the steering and suspension but on the wheels and tires and then i'll briefly go over the rear the, the back of the car that's more in detail in the kitchen video that i've already released and then I'll go over the interior of the car and how we've kitted that out for living full time out of it. So first up, we'll go over the exterior. I trust, basically with my life, with our Jeep, a company called Double Black Off-Road in Victoria in Australia. They are also manufacturers of in-house uh, gear, if you will. So a lot of the armor that's on the car is actually Double Black Off-Road produced. You can't buy it anywhere else. And that's one thing I really, really like about it. So first up, we've got their modular stubby ball bar. This actually also has wings that can be connected to it to actually cover the tires. But I like the stubby aggressive look and I like having the tires more open for obstacles and rocks, etc. It has a recessed winch. Now, in here, I've got an X2O 10,000 pound Smitty built winch. I haven't had to use it yet because the, obviously the car is really capable as it is, but I know if I do, it's got the grunt and it's got the reliability to duck out of any situation. So that's got a flick up license plate. In Australia, you have to have a license plate on the front, unfortunately, unlike I've seen a few states in, in, in America. Now, yeah, pretty standard. There's the winch spool, synthetic rope. I like that this bumper has more, op more opportunities, if you will, uh, for aerials, for more spotties, anything like that. I'm running steady type x sports this is an australian manufacturer of lighting goods really high spec stuff these things literally light the night up so if i turn these on when these kangaroos about to jump out in front of the car the kangaroos literally just burst into flame so it's pretty pretty cool and to add to that not that i'm afraid of the dark or anything but we've also got a 52 inch steady light bar across the top which gives a whole heap of speed lights the road up and then I've also got similar little lights on the side that I can operate from a separate switch just to light the rocks and obstacles around to the side of me, which I find mainly useful for when we set up for the night for camping. It helps me maneuver the car when it's pitch black. 
obviously the the view angles aren't so good in the Jeep as you know pretty small windscreen other than that not a ton on the exterior I recently installed an AV snorkel I'll show you how that works and that you come over here please Ange that is plumbed straight into an air raid cold air intake uh, the reason I love the cold air intake is it has a much larger snorkel uh, going into the engine and it makes a really nice deep rumble when you put your foot on the accelerator that is if the ginormous fan isn't whirring in the background which will still basically take over it if you guys have a jeep that runs well 3.6 of you you'll know what i'm talking about with these fans sounds like a jet engine's uh, taken off other than that not a lot has been done to the car at all breathers have been extended running a just a normal decent battery i've got another dual battery in the back that i'll go over over here i've got a steeble ebay special steeble uh, high frequency horn if you will now i hated the original jeep horn it sounds like a muppet is pressing like meh, meh. it's terrible so it's dangerous to me first of all people can hardly hear it. i couldn't even hear it in the cab and second of all in australia we get a lot of animal strike that's probably the most dangerous thing on the australian roads literally every animal in this country wants to run directly at your headlights including camels so i found it really important to have a really high loud horn that was super easy to install all i did was remove the old horn chuck that in the trash shoved this in there's not a lot of room and i just connected it into the original uh, electrical connections for the for the stock horn and the only thing i need to do was in the fuse box i changed it from a 10 amp fuse which it blew straight away to a 15 that's been sweet so far other than that everything's the same so i'll chuck that down I do like the hood and that it has the vents and it's got more of an aggressive look which is cool. You'll see I've got a CB radio, so just a unit in radio that I've connected to the side. So we'll go around this way now. That's the aerial there, works really well and I've just fabricated up a little bracket to stick to the side, to a light bracket on the side and then I've added some KC highlight. Uh, brackets for these little guys here they work pretty well i don't use them a ton but uh, they work really well now these huge fenders here now the australian government or the roads i guess very very strict with tires poking out past the guards so double black off road manufactured these fiberglass ones so they're really light which is cool they're starting to fade a little bit um, i may add an extra coat of gloss paint or something like that but they're big they've got their own indicators which is cool and then Double Black Off-Road also made the side sill armor. So we've got the, the sill protected here. And then we've also got the uh, steel running boards also manufactured by Double Black Off-Road. And they're really nice because they don't stick out too far, which I really like. They're tucked up nice and high and they're solid as hell. So I know I can pivot the car on rocks if I needed to. Haven't had to so far because we've got heaps of clearance. Uh, on the side, I've got a little eBay special step. Don't have to use that too much. Uh, I'm relatively tall. Uh, Ange has used it a couple of times to get to the tent, but we've got a ladder in that tent, so it's fine. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Uh, I like the look, to be honest. And they weren't too dear, uh, and they, they serve a purpose. And then coming along here, now, the one of the only things I'll be changing on the Jeep is with this new... Uh, King's Grand Tour rooftop tent it actually has some some sliders some sort of like bracket mounts on the side but they hadn't released the brackets for their awning yet so I've had to fabricate my own little setup here normally it'll be sitting a lot higher when I can actually get a hold of those brackets I can't get it delivered anywhere because we don't even have an address so it's a little bit tricky so when I can get my hand on those this awning will sit much higher. It's a 270 degree awning, so it flips right around the back of our kitchen. That's working really well. I'll do a review of that in another video. Uh, so over here, we've got um, just some side sort of camping rock lights. I haven't even actually wired those up yet. I will do at some stage when I can get around to it. 
two here and two on the other side. So we've got quite a bit of light that we can throw out to the side of the vehicle for camping. And then a eBay special petrol cap. I'm sure a lot of you guys would have seen that if you own a Jeep. Down here, just some custom fabricated uh, quick disconnect mud flaps. The Australian, obviously the roads are uh, really strict with having mud flaps as well. So I keep those on most time, unless we're doing really hard trails. I can just disconnect them from the pin in the back and just chuck them in the back of the car. So they've been really handy. Other than that, again, double back off roads, or flares rather, and they also make the plastic uh, insets, which is nice. Then around to the back, we have a Smitty built Atlas tire carrier, which the big downside is that it's enormously heavy but I love it and that you'll see it carries everything we need. 37 inch tire on the back. These are our original pro comps. So this is a brand new tire. I haven't swapped to the others. I'll go over the tire soon, but we've got 37 inch pro comp here. Trasheroo trash bag, which we love. We use it every day. Wet, dirty gear, uh, obviously trash, a little bit of firewood and kindling. Uh, everything's sweet there. So this swings out. And then if you come closer over here, Ange, this is kind of how we're running the setup. So super heavy. So we've got 20 litres of fuel on at the moment. And then we have 20 litres of water. Uh, that's just a tarp. We use that for sand or, or, or in the mud. Or we'll put it under our ladder at night time sometimes. Strapped in a little shovel. And I have plumbed an LPG gas tank. This is just a little two kilogram one. And that runs to the back here and that powers obviously the kitchen stove I shouldn't say powers but gas is the kitchen stove GoPro mount stuck to the top uh, this is my toilet chair so that's just an old camping chair I've cut a hole out of in the middle taped around you get the idea on that that sits nicely there we've got our citronella anti mozzie candle and the water works really well it's just connected to a garden hose that I've plumbed into this pro quip jerry can and then I've used a few little, basically a home hardware saw. And these were for an irrigation system. But it just runs by gravity. You can let some air in if you need to. And it just fires out water. So that's, like, we use that all day, every day, basically. And so far, when we started the trip, I was concerned that I might want a 12-volt pump. We haven't needed it. Like, we're always, water's always an issue for us, even more than petrol. Uh, finding it we don't like paying for water obviously so if we had a pump we would be using more of it too quickly you anyway. know it wouldn't actually serve a purpose for us so there's that tire carrier and then I'm not going to go too much over the interior and the back here because this isn't a separate video but just briefly I built the back completely myself I'm not a woodworker but I gave it a bit of a crack fridge pulls out 40 litre Waco back in on slides we have our pantries that's Ange's side this is my side just shoving stuff in the back you Jeep owners will know that all of the space in this car is a necessity so we just put different things obviously toilet paper paper towels tents sleeping bags light stuff that we can keep up high that doesn't take up too much uh, room elsewhere in the car underneath now we've got the table out at the moment but we've got one of those big plastic fold-out tables that's why I made this with a recess so that it's actually quite high. So that goes all the way to the back, but still gives room for the subwoofer to breathe. So uh, because this Rubicon X is really nice sound system, so I wanted to keep it that way. On the side I've got uh, hammer and tools. So that's my socket set in here. And then other bits and pieces, liquids. I've got coolant, oil, uh, power steering fluid, brake fluid, etc. Tucked into the back and then just some drawers. And then the stainless steel cooking surface. Use that the whole time. And then our stove. Cable from the gas straight in. Or we can use one of those if we run out. Works perfectly. That goes back in. Um, just some Dettol, obviously. That's for our sponges. Diving knife for killing people or fishing. 
um, basically I don't use it. And that goes back in. Umbrella, which we will ditch after Tasmania because it takes up too much space. But yeah, you get the idea. Now you'll see later on I'm running a, a camera in the back here. So our little reverse camera is just here. And that has been a godsend. It was super cheap eBay special. And that enabled me on constructing the kitchen and pantry in the galley and enabled me to fill it right to the top so there was hardly any room with this big 37 inch tire and the spare anyway so that worked really well other than that this atlas tire carrier is a monster and then i've just got a tow hitch i know i can get pulled out if i need to or pull people out uh, and i think that's probably it in the back we are running that rooftop tent which folds out that aluminium hard shell I'll do a separate review of that so we're not going to go over that today just briefly I'm running a rhino rack backbone system I used to have a big heavy pioneer tray now bloody expensive too wasn't the right size for this so I ditched the train rather than buying the longer tray I just went with three of their heavy duty crossbars I couldn't find any information online or on rhino racks website whether this would even work uh, I just gave it a whirl and it's been perfect. Uh, it's a lot lighter and cheaper than that Pioneer system. So if you are mounting a rooftop tent, you don't have to have that Pioneer rack if you do have the runner rack backbone system. So just close this all up. That's pretty much the exterior of the car. On this side, the only difference is this is where we run the ladder from up here this telescopic ladder comes out that's it up on top I'm running some max tracks running pro comp 17 inch wheels they're not a true beadlock they're just more of a an imitation look if you will I didn't want to have to deal with the hassle of beadlocks at this stage I may in the future but probably not they're also illegal on Australian roads uh, now we we're always running pro comp mud terrain 37 inch tires they did 110,000 kilometers, so they were an incredible tire, but due to the Australian to US dollar, they're not actually bringing those into the country anymore. So we went with an equally awesome brand, Mickey Thompson, and these have just gone on, Baja MTZ P3s, so I can't give much of a review on those yet. All I know is they've got a really nice thick sidewall, so I can drop the PSI down to like 14, 16 PSI really comfortably and not worry too much about running a bead or anything. And at the moment they're at 20 psi so the car is sitting a little bit lower just to give it more of a footprint because we have been beach driving now i'm running that with fox reservoir shocks four to six inch travel and then around here terraflex bump stops uh arb old man emu springs four and a half inch i wouldn't mind going to six i'll see if i do that in the future maybe at some point just to give this car a little bit uh, more height now that it's got a little bit of uh, weight to it obviously we're running uh chromoly tie rod uh synergy synergy steering components synergy steering flip kit with a fox steering stabilizer steering dampener if you will and that's been flipped so that's why a few people have said oh you've got your uh, steering stabilizer around the wrong way i don't it's had a flip kit put on it because this car is a lot higher than stock now now i don't know if you see i'll just take the camera and in here we are running front and lower synergy control arms and it has a shorter drive shaft uh, for that uh, for that change in geometry if you will so it actually drives really nice doesn't drive like a boat like my old one did and uh, really happy with how it's been set up by double black off-road all right so just briefly on the interior dash setup and console setup now as you jeepers know it's a very small narrow windscreen and I can get a little bit claustrophobic if things are really, really cluttered. So I've decided not to go for all the big uh, GPS and the bells and whistles all over the dash. So just briefly starting with the 67 Designs phone holder. This thing has been absolutely fantastic. I've tried so many other things, the stick-on windscreen ones and whatnot. And this works really well. Now it was overly expensive i would say to get it into australia but even for you australians i would highly recommend it it's never failed it never moves it's been really really good and then next to it where another mount could be instead of put a gopro and that is for filming Angie and i when we're vlogging while driving so moving over this way 
She's got the heavy duty grab handles, another eBay special. <clears throat> and then I've got my lighting switchboard. So this controls the uh, 52 inch light bar, that controls the spotties, and the side one controls the, the side lights. Then I'm running a wind booster acceleration or throttle controller. And that is fantastic. So that changes the amount of input required to get the car going under acceleration. So I can set that, for instance, to sport move and just a touch of the accelerator will get this thing revving high, which I really like on the highway. And then I can switch that back to a different mode for off-road use and it makes it much less sensitive. So tapping the accelerator doesn't smash me over rocks, rather it takes a lot more input. So that's an upgrade I would really recommend. And there's a, a load of different manufacturers on the market that do them. Uh, I went with wind boost and it's been really good and it's got nine different modes. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then moving up to the top here, a few people have commented on it. They're looking a bit dirty and dusty and whatever and weathered now. But what I did was I chopped into the, just the stock fiberglass freedom panels and I put in, I just cut some acrylic, which has now been UV tinted. I chucked some UV tint over the top. And that has given me a really cool skylight. Then I just siliconed the absolute bejesus out of the uh, side of it so it doesn't leak at all. And they're cool because they let a lot more light in and I feel like the cab feels a lot more open. It's something that should be done from stock for sure. And it hasn't affected the freedom panels at all and they're super, super strong. So it's actually stronger than fiberglass. Now, this was much more effective before we had the rooftop tent when we were just running a swag. Now you don't get so much, but it still does let a lot of light in, and, um, and that's really good. We've got a sunshade mesh um, sort of thing that we can put over the top if it gets too sunny anyway, so that works really well. And then back up here, just an eBay special platform where we can just hang bells and whistles, um, just little walkie-talkies and whatnot. And then moving to what I said earlier with my rear vision camera, absolutely love this thing. It's got a really, really wide field of view so wide that it actually shows me more than my side mirrors do as well combined so it's removed some of my blind spots and it has a really good night capability as well so i really like that and then with a little swish of the finger i can change to a front dash cam as well and if i put an sd card in it i can actually record the front dash as well that was really cheap that was definitely under 200 dollars on ebay and they've got a million manufacturers there I chose this one because of the reviews, it works really well. I don't even think it really is a brand, so I can't tell you what it is. And it literally just straps over the top of my rear vision camera. So, uh, sorry, my um, rear vision mirror. So that works really well. Now moving on down here, I've got a little mount that I fabricated here for the unit in CB radio. Don't use it a lot, but I've got the capability of doing so. And I like that it has all the controls on the handpiece. Now, because all the controls are there, just a magnet there, it enables me to have a very small control unit. You probably can't see, it's not, not the best lighting, obviously, but that I've just bolted to the side of the car there, and it's out of Angie's way. And then moving on to something I'm pretty proud of is my ARB compressor. <laughs> And all I need to do is connect the hose in and that, I can't remember the name, I think it's a CMYK12 or some, something along those lines. I can put that in the description. Uh, it's a high flow. It's not the dual flow one, but it works really, really well for filling up my, uh, our 37 inch tires. So that's been a bit of a, a godsend. I like having it tucked away into this glove box. We can still put a few things on top of it, but it got it right out of the way and it gets it way out of any kind of water level so if i had it under the seat it is possible water ingress will get in there if we go through really deep crossings and that's been perfect i've just literally bolted it into the um into the glove box here and the wiring is all tucked under the dash as much of it as i can anyway so that's proved really excellent and then when i put the hose in i can just run it out the driver's side window for those sides of the uh, car tires and then just out the door on this side so it reaches all the tires works really well i've got one of those arb electronic digital readouts and yeah it's been perfect all right so running hammer here and i can also use google maps for navigation but i i've chosen not to go with a really large gps system 
I don't want to massively clutter up. It would be different if I didn't have Ange, or for instance, when I'm sitting in the passenger seat. That way I could have had quite a bit of stuff over on that side, but because it's two of us at all times, I wanted to keep it as free as possible. So now we'll move into the back of the car and pretty much our living space, and then that'll be the walk around. All right, so a bit of an awkward angle to film from. And it's obviously not the neatest because we are living out of this at the moment, but I just want to go over basically our living space. So what I ended up doing was, because we now no longer really have a home, I had nowhere to store the back seats if I removed them completely. So I've ended up unbolting the front of the seats, the rear seats, and I've folded them on themselves. And then I've ratchet strapped them together so they don't move and they take up almost no room or no living space that we need anyway then on this side we've just got our two front runner chairs on either side that just hang over the headrests that's the reason we went with these chairs is because that that nice square profile design got my little hat rack there and i've also up the top here got another jerry can ratcheted for any of the big big missions that we do where i need it um, but that doesn't have any petrol in it and I try not to use it if I can. Above we've got our larger backpacks that we use for overnight hikes uh, with this cargo mesh so that actually supports a lot of it. Little strip LED light here and I've got one in the back over the kitchen and that I can change to any colour I want. It just gives us a little bit more light in the interior here. Now what we're running, uh, I really wanted to build a really elaborate wooden setup but because we're already pushing three ton i opted against making anything uh big bulky or wooden or heavy in here so what we ended up doing was there's a a grocery company called coles i ended up managing to source their collapsible plastic boxes they fully collapse in and on each other they're very light what I've done, obviously I normally have three here for myself as well, but I've just pulled this out for the video. So we've got six in total. It works a little bit like a shelving unit. I've ratchet tied one end so that they actually pull up and then you can access the next spot underneath. They've been really, really good. I'm really happy with the idea. The design works well. They're a good size. It enables us to shut the doors nicely. And then we just tuck stuff that doesn't get used as often, like jackets and, and things like that. Now, I built this charging console. Not sure if you can see, but underneath, we've got a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And that, with a flick of the switch, gives me 240 volts to run all the appliances and stuff so we do a lot of drone work so that's the main thing that gets charged on here my sony battery uh, our laptop my electric toothbrush for instance pretty much anything so that's invaluable i've just made a little padded station for it so everything we access this from the front seat we just reach back plug anything in we need to and it stays nice and solid there does not move at all and we can charge everything we need. Now that's a bit of a no-name inverter. I didn't want to fork out a huge amount of money for it in case it wasn't exactly what the needs required. Um, but it's worked, it's worked perfectly. So we're really happy with that. Uh, now moving on, underneath the chair here on the sides, I've got all of our training equipment, a mat for that just stuff packed into the sides behind is the wooden shelving unit from before got a readily accessible fire extinguisher always need those and then obviously hanging from the unit before we've got the Garmin GPS for hiking uh, I've got my winch controller here uh, yeah just just basic stuff and then I'm just going to briefly go over my 12 volt setup so I'll come around the other side okay so round to Angie's side Hers has obviously got a bit more stuff than mine does uh, and very hard to see so I do apologize guys but back here we've got a 12 volt deep cycle battery on top of that is just our first aid kit that deep cycle battery has a it's basically in in like a, a battery box that has a bunch of Anderson connectors uh, gives me a voltage readout here to show me and that's proved awesome so this powers via the Anderson plugs this powers that 
1500 watt inverter on the charging station that I showed you and it runs our 40 uh, litre fridge full time so that's always running now at some point in the near future I, I may chuck a small flexible solar panel on our rooftop tent and that may just give me a little bit of a trickle charge for if we decide to stay at camp for more than two nights at this stage we've never stayed anywhere more than two nights so we haven't really needed it uh, and obviously this deep cycle battery is powered by the alternator on the car when it's running all right so now that i've got my setup this is what it's normally looking like back back down the side uh tripod and then i've got my day-to-day -day clothing the stuff that i use regularly body wash toiletries and then first level is the stuff I don't use as often maybe my warmer gear and whatnot and then the one that I don't have flipping up I've got my kettlebell tool bag and uh, yeah so that works really nice and then I've got like my boots that I don't use very often tucked into the back and then I can always create more room temporarily by putting that seat forward but yeah it works really well again I would have loved to have done some beautiful wooden setup but I can't afford the weight Thanks for checking out this walk around video guys. Hopefully that went over most of what you're curious about with our build. Uh, again, so apologies, it's a bit messy, it's a bit dirty. This is what we're living in at the moment. So and we are currently in Tasmania. It's proved pretty hard to get a non-windy day. So hopefully that audio came out okay. How are you finding our setup on a day-to-day -day from a female passenger, not always passenger standpoint? <laughs> Well, for like being a month on the road, I feel like we got used to this setup pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everything we need. Um, the only annoying thing for me so far was the awning on my side is mm -hmm. really low, so I can't really shut and open the door properly. But this problem should be fixed very soon once we get a new bracket. Other than that, uh, I mean, I'm loving it. The rooftop tent has been great, mm. much better than the swag for overlanding. The kitchen worked perfectly, so no, I think like so far it's amazing so for our us friends a swag is an australian style tent uh, a little bit different than a tent and it's much cooler for the australian weather now with our rooftop tent it is aluminium so it's a hard shell now it enables us to put all of our bedding in it and that was one of the huge ones for us yeah. bedding sleeping bags pillows that takes up so much space so it's cool that we can have that on the roof it's not hugely heavy uh, but it's really good to get that out of our living arrangement and that's what we couldn't do with the swag and it also proves much faster to set up so and fast. 10 times faster to pack down than a swag even which only took five minutes so this is so fast and we've gotten really good at it and jumps on one side i jump on the other we pull it down it's close it's done it's, so it's really really cool the only annoying thing is I always have to get up in the middle of the night to take a leak and um, I've got to go down a ladder. That's about it. But, um, but yeah, the setup's working really well. If you have any questions about any components, anything you want a more in-depth look at, anything stupid that I've done that I've overlooked and could do better, please let me know in the comments. Keep tuned for some more videos, including some reviews and maybe even another walk around in maybe six months' time. See if anything's changed.